Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about relative motion. There's not a lot of new theory that's going to be introduced. Most of this video is going to go over some problem solving using relative motion. Starting off with important vocabulary. A frame of reference is a coordinate system relative to which motion is described or observed. Relative velocity is a velocity of an object relative to a specific reference frame. These are definitions from the Nelson textbook. Okay, so here's some examples of relative velocity. You'll note that the second subscript in each term shows the frame of reference. Velocity bw is equal to the velocity of the boat with respect to the water. So this is your reference frame here. Similarly, velocity we is the velocity of water with respect to earth, and velocity be represents velocity of boat with respect to earth. Now taking all of these into account, in order to find the velocity of the boat with respect to Earth, it would be equal to the velocity of the boat with respect to the water, plus the velocity of the water with respect to Earth. So the inside subscripts are the ones that cancel, so that's how you make sure that you're finding the appropriate resultant. You can of course rearrange this equation, so for example if you were looking for VBW, you would just bring this term to the other side, so it would be VBE minus VWE, or for example, if you were finding VWE, you would bring this one to the other side. So it would just be VWE is equal to VBE minus VBW. So here's a quick list of useful vocabulary for word problems. So airspeed is the speed of the plane relative to the air. And this would be VPA. Wind speed is the speed of the wind relative to the ground, which is just VWE, as ground is synonymous with earth. Ground speed is the speed of the plane relative to the ground, so VPE. Anytime they're talking about a current, that's the speed of the water relative to the shore, so VWE. And then speed of the boat in still water means the speed of the boat relative to the water, so VBW. That's about all the theory there is in relative motion, so let's just go straight ahead into solving some problems. So starting off with a theory problem, imagine two boats setting out from shore to cross the river. One boat heads directly across but is swept down the river. The other boat heads upstream, ending up directly across from its starting position. Which boat will get to the other side first, and why? So I'm going to let pink represent boat 1, which is the boat that heads directly across, the other boat is represented by green, which heads upstream. Note that the pink boat has its entire velocity in the y component, whereas the green boat has both an x and a y component, as it's fighting against the current. The pink boat will get across first, because its y component is much bigger than the green boat's y component. Therefore, boat 1 crosses the river first. Okay, so now moving on to the Nelson chapter 1.6 questions on page 49. We're going to start off with a relatively simple problem, which is number 2. Okay, so number 2 reads, An airplane has an air velocity of 200 meters per second west. The wind velocity relative to the ground is 60 meters per second north. Part A asks, Determine the velocity of the airplane relative to the ground. So first, analyzing our givens, we were given that the plane has an air velocity of 200 meters per second west. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air is 200 meters per second west. It also says the wind velocity relative to the ground is 60 meters per second north. Wind is analogous to air, so this is represented by VAG. Now we're trying to find VPG, the plane relative to the ground. So let's come up with that equation where the inner subscripts can cancel. So VPG is equal to VPA plus VAG. If you draw out the quick sketch, you'll note that it's a right angle triangle, and so this operation over here tells us what operation to use within the Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to let north and west be positive. Plug in the numbers that we already have and solve to get that the speed of the plane relative to the ground is 208.8 meters per second. Referring back to the original question, you'll see that they gave us one sig fig, so that rounds to 2 times 10 to the 2 meters per second. And to find the angle of the velocity of the plane to the ground, you'll note that it's this angle over here. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so that the angle will be the inverse tan of the speed of the air to the ground over the speed of the plane to the air. 
When subbing the numbers in, that gives you 17 degrees, which rounds to 20 degrees when using one sig fig. So your final answer referring to your diagram, you note that your direction is west, 20 degrees north. So your final answer for the velocity of the plane to the ground is 2 times 10 to the 2 meters per second west, 20 degrees north. Part B states, the plane now faces a headwind of 60 meters per second east. Calculate how long it takes the plane to fly between two cities 300 kilometers apart. Okay, so analyzing this question, it tells you that the headwind is 60 meters per second east, which means your velocity of the air relative to the ground is now 60 meters per second east instead of north as it was in part A. So using this equation that we derived up here, VPG is equal to VPA plus VAG. And now that this is in one dimension, it's only east and west, which are opposing directions, we don't need Pythagorean theorem. Letting west be positive once again, note that when you add the velocity of the plane to the air to the velocity of the air to the ground, this 60 meters per second becomes negative because we let west be positive. So your velocity of the plane to the ground is now 140 meters per second. The question also tells you that the two cities are 300 kilometers apart. Performing factor label method, you'll see that it's 300,000 meters. Now remember that times a scalar quantity, so just the distance over the speed, which in this case is VPG. So 300,000 meters over 140 meters per second gives you 2,143 seconds. It doesn't give you a specific unit for your answer to be in, so you can leave it as is, or you can convert it to minutes, for example. And this would be 36 minutes with one sig fig, it'd be 4 times 10 minutes. Number 5 states, a pilot is required to fly directly from London, UK to Rome, Italy in 3.4 hours. The displacement is 1.4 times 10 to the 3 kilometers south, 43 degrees east. The wind velocity reported from the ground is 55 kilometers per hour south. Determine the required velocity of the plane relative to the air. So analyzing this question for what we are given, we're given displacement, we're given velocity of the air relative to earth, and we're given the time. Now we're trying to find the velocity of the plane relative to the air, which is VPA. Notice that we're given the displacement and the time. If we were to solve to find velocity using these two pieces of information, you'd be actually solving to find the velocity of the plane relative to earth. Solving that and keeping a few extra sig figs for accuracy, we get 411.8 kilometers per hour south, 43 degrees east. These aren't SI units, but for the purpose of this problem, just so you understand the method, I'm going to keep it in kilometers per hour, but you can easily convert to meters per second using factor label method. Now coming up with that equation to cancel the variables on the inside, just so we have the general equation, the velocity of the plane to the earth is equal to the velocity of the plane to the air plus the velocity of the air to the ground. So solving for VPA, VPA is equal to VPE minus VAG. Letting south and east be positive, we're going to break these down into components as there's more than one direction. Okay, so for the x component, the velocity of the air to the earth is 0 km per hour as it's going 55 km per hour south, so the entirety of that velocity is in your y component. As for the velocity of the plane to the earth, you have x and y components as it's south 43 degrees east. If you make a quick sketch to visualize the components, you'll see that the y component is related through cos as it's your adjacent side over here, whereas the x component is sine. Solving the x component gives you 280.8 km per hour. Solving for the y component gives you 301.2 km per hour. Using this equation that we found, VPA is VPE minus VAG. Solving for the x component, you get that velocity of plane to the air is 280.8 km per hour, and in the y component, it's 246.2 km per hour. Now, of course, to find the overall magnitude, you do Pythagorean theorem, and then you get 373 kilometers per hour. And with appropriate sig figs, since the question was two sig figs, it should be 3.7 times 10 to the 2 kilometers per hour. To solve for the angle using the tan ratio, tan is opposite over adjacent. So if you're solving for this angle here, your opposite is your x component and your adjacent is your y component. Subbing the numbers in gives you 49 degrees. 
So your final answer of the velocity of the plane to the air is 3.7 times 10 to the 2 kilometers per hour south, 49 degrees east. Okay, so now we're moving on to number 6, which is also a great question. A pilot is flying to a destination 220 kilometers north of her present position. An air traffic controller on the ground tells her the wind velocity is 42 kilometers per hour north 36 degrees east. She knows her plane cruises at a speed of 230 kilometers per hour relative to the air. Part A asks, determine the heading of the plane. Again, first analyzing for our givens, we're given the displacement should be 220 kilometers north, we're given that the velocity of the air to the ground is 42 km per hour north 36 degrees east, and the speed of the plane to the air is 230 km per hour. Since we know that the pilot is flying to a destination 220 km north of her present position, we know that the velocity of the plane to the ground is also in the direction north. So what don't we know? We don't know the direction of this one, and we don't know the speed of the plane to the ground. We know that VPG is equal to VPA plus VAG. Now we have to break it down into components once again, and now I'm going to let north and east be positive. Okay, so creating a quick sketch of what this travel looks like, you'll note here that this angle is 36 degrees, and we're solving for that angle there, as that's the velocity of the plane to the air. So using this little diagram to separate your information into x and y components, you'll see that the velocity of the plane to the ground in the x component is zero, since your entire displacement is north, whereas the velocity of the air to the ground in the x component is 42 kilometers per hour sine 36. The x component is over here, and it's your opposite side. Whereas your y component is your adjacent side, which is cos. Now for the velocity of the plane to the air, we know that it has a speed of 230 kilometers per hour, but we don't know the degree, which is represented by theta. So you know that the x component is sine, and the y component is cos. When analyzing your two components, you'll note that we have two unknowns on the y component side. We have the velocity of the plane to the ground in the y component, which we don't know, as well as theta that we don't know. Whereas in your x component, we have all the information except for theta. So that's how we know that's the component which we'll be working with first. Since we know that VPG is equal to VPA plus VAG, we just equal zero to these two pieces of information. When you rearrange for theta and plug in your numbers, you get negative 6.16. And if you refer back to your diagram, that makes sense because negative would be that it's going west. Now that we have theta, we can plug that into this equation to find velocity of the plane to the air in the y component. Plugging your numbers into VPAY, you'll get that 230 kilometers per hour times cos of negative 6.16 is 228.7 kilometers per hour. Solving for VAGY, 42 kilometers per hour cos 36 gives you 33.98 kilometers per hour. And again, using the equation we got, VPGY would be equal to the Y components of VPA plus VAG. Subbing those numbers in gives you 262.7 kilometers per hour. Since we already have the velocity of the plane to the ground in the X component, which is just zero, Using the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude, since the x component is 0, square root of a square term, which is this, would just be equal to the term itself. So the overall velocity of the plane to the ground is just 262.7 kilometers per hour. Part A just asks us for the heading, and we already got that information from over here. So the heading of the plane, referring to our diagram, you'll note that it's negative 6.16 degrees, and we let east be positive, so we know it is representing west, so north, 6.2 degrees west, since there were two sig figs in the question. So the plane's heading is north, 6.2 degrees west. In part b, they ask, how long will the trip take? Well, we know that the distance is equal to the speed times time, so similarly, if you rearrange for time, it's the distance over the speed. Sorry, this should be magnitude, as you're doing Pythagorean theorem. So this would be equal to the displacement they gave you, which is also distance, and then the velocity of the plane to the ground. Since both the displacement and the velocity of the plane to the ground are north, then we can just use the scalar equation of distance divided by the speed. So 220 kilometers divided by 262.7 kilometers per hour gives you 0.84 hours. Okay, so the last question we're going to solve in the Nelson textbook is number 9. 
It says a car is traveling due east with a speed of 60 kilometers per hour relative to the ground. Raindrops are falling at a constant speed vertically relative to Earth. The traces of rain on the side windows of a car make an angle 70 degrees with the vertical. Calculate the velocity of the rain relative to A, the car, and B, the Earth. So if you make a sketch of what's going on, it tells you that the rain is falling at a constant speed vertically relative to Earth. So it's straight down over here. Whereas we know that the car is traveling due east at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, so we know that VCG is equal to 60 kilometers per hour east. Whereas the velocity of the rain to the car is what we're trying to find, and we know that the traces of rain make an angle 70 degrees with the vertical, so that's this angle theta over here. Coming up with that equation where the inside variables cancel once again, VRG is equal to VRC plus VCG. You'll note that the vectors VRC and VCG are tip to tail. And so you'll note this is your resultant over here. Now since this is a right angle triangle, we can just use the right angle triangle ratios. In part A, we're solving for VRC. Since we already have the angle, we can actually easily solve for the velocity of the rain to the car. Since we have the speed of the car to the ground, and we're solving for the velocity of the rain to the car, it's your opposite and your hypotenuse, so that's sine. So opposite over hypotenuse would be VCG over VRC. So if you're solving for VRC, that's just equal to VCG over sine theta. So we know it's 60 kilometers per hour over sine of 70, as that's the angle that we were given. And you get that VRC is equal to 63.95 kilometers per hour, and then easily convert that to meters per second using factor label method, which gives you 17.7 .7 meters per second. Since we were already given the angle and referring back to our diagram, we note that that's 70 degrees west of the vertical. So you can say that the velocity of the rain to the car is 17.7 .7 meters per second vertically down, but 70 degrees west. Applying the same concepts to find the velocity of the rain to the ground, it'd be your adjacent side as well as your opposite side, so that's tan. So we know that tan theta is equal to VCG over VRG. And again, we're arranging for VRG, that's just equal to VCG over tan of theta. Plugging those numbers in, you get 21.84 kilometers per hour, and we already know that this is straight downwards, as it was stated in the question. Converting this to meters per second using factor label method, you times by 1000 meters and divide by 3600 seconds, and you get 6.07 meters per second straight down. Okay, so that wraps up this relative motion lesson. I'm actually going to end it off with a test question I had with relative motion. So you can try this at home, and I'll just write down the answer so you can check over your work to see if you did it correctly. As your answer, the displacement in the X should be 90 meters, and the angle required should be 49 degrees. So I'm going to leave you with these two diagrams, which should help you solve the problem. That wraps up this lesson. For the next lesson, we're actually going to be moving away from kinematics, so what produces this motion instead of focusing on just the motion itself. Our next lesson is going to be about forces and free body diagrams, so stay tuned.